Where do you want to start? You've missed a bit. Well, we're a forward-looking bunch at our plate, so we aren't going to dwell on the morons of the past. Quit living in the past. We're going to look to the future. You're taking the path of least resistance? If it ain't broke. First up in our underworld figures to keep an eye on special commemorative inaugural <laughs> show for 2024 is gangster journeyman Brett Peachy. <laughs> who may or may not know that's not how you spell chaos. Brett needs watching because he's managed to piss off an awful lot of rough tough people in 2023. The one time bandido turned brother for life-ish popped up late last year as the self-proclaimed National Sergeant at Arms for the Rock Machine Gang. That was a short-lived affiliation courtesy of an embarrassing shopping centre altercation with two members of the Mongol Gang, Brad Baker and Clovis Chukonga. That's chaos wandering through the Kingsway Shopping Centre in the northern Perth suburb of Kingsley, presumably looking for the supplement mart. That's Brett walking to his car. That's Mongol Brad and Mongol Clovis. And that's Brett producing a knife before running like Usain Bolt after realising quite understandably, if you ask me, that if you're on your own and outnumbered by walking meat axes, you need more than one small blade. Smart. S-M-R-T. I mean S-M-A-R-R-T. Chaos can move when he needs to. Obviously does at least some cardio at the gym. Look at him go. He's like something out of the Roadrunner. And the coyotes are. Meep, meep. It's even better when you play it like this. That incident from back in December caused the rock machine to say f you to Brett. And then Brett said f you back by going full Dane Brakovich and putting his club gear up for sale on Facebook. Surely Dane makes his list. Yes. For his work as the face of a new throat lozenges campaign. Let me guess. Troy McCanty. Please. This is a guy who can get arrested for farting in the wrong octave, so yeah, he's on the list. <laughs> that's it, you're under arrest! The ever closer police attention that McCanty courts, that's him getting charged with the crime of sitting on a bench, will almost inevitably see him punch a cop at some point in 2024. That'd be good news for Troy's lawyer because he charges in six minute blocks. It'd be good news for the cops at gang crime, at least the ones that didn't get punched, because they'll get a mountain of overtime busting down doors for the ensuing six months. And it'll be good for the environment because we all know how bikies get the money they need to pay legal bills and court fines. By recycling your empties through containers for change, he'll need a lot of cans if John quickly makes good on his promise. WA's crusading attorney general is on the list of people to watch. He makes the cut courtesy of his vow to look at ever tougher bikey laws, which is going to stretch newspaper headline writers. Whatever John has in store, it will not please coffin cheater Chris Ballistic Orchard, who was so incensed by crackdown Mark 1, he observed it was like living in Nazi Germany, lodging his complaint on social media while standing in front of a decorative swastika. Next up, we have David Pye. <laughs> The man police say orchestrated the assassination of Rebels Chief Nick Martin in 2020 goes on trial this year. Being billed as the greatest courtroom blockbuster since Jack Nicholson questioned Tom Cruise's ability to cope with circumstantial reality. You can't handle the truth! And will no doubt ensure David's lawyer won't be reduced to fossicking three bins for empty cans like some kind of broke Jawa just to make ends meet. Carla Brock's got a big court case coming up The also. Rebels figurehead is no stranger to the inside of a courtroom, but 2024 will see the trial of his life. <laughs> Carl's been keeping his club together with dental floss and snot since Jamie Ginn died last year. After spending the past few months cleaning house at the club, Carl's now gearing up for his own battle. He's accused of collaborating with Australian racing identity Kelly Kersley to possess almost a half a million dollars in alleged dirty money. Kersley's in the bin for that one. In fact, I think she's about to get out. So Carl's legal team has its work cut out for it to convince a jury he's innocent of a crime for which someone's already been convicted. LeBrook's almost as old school as our next entry. Andrew Edhouse is an elder statesman of the Club Dero's bikie gang. He could be back in the headlines this year if the coroner presses the go button on an inquest into the death of Kalgoorlie woman Lisa Govan. Andrew was partying with Lisa at the Darrow's Boulder Road clubhouse the morning she disappeared 25 years ago, but has so far refused to tell the cops what he knows. He's not going to lose sleep over the coroner. No. 
but he might be sweating about what is being said by two former Club Dero members facing historical rape charges, because who knows what information they'll be willing to cough up in exchange for a reduced sentence. Which one know? Which is a nice segue to one-time gypsy joker Sid Reed. <laughs> Sid's friends call him Snot, not that he has had many friends since he rolled over on his club 20 years ago. That was after the cops put the heat on him for the car bombing deaths of retired detective Don Hancock and Lou Lewis. Reed's been in witness protection ever since because the Jokers would like a quiet word with him. I ain't gonna hurt you. This year could be a big one for Snot because of a bloke named Gary White, who was mates with Jokers co-founder Les Hoddy. Gary serving a life sentence for murder and is appealing against the guilty verdict because it was secured almost exclusively on Reed's since discredited testimony. The word is the Gypsy Jokers know exactly where Sid is and the only reason Snot's not dead is because he holds the key to getting their mate Gary out of jail. And if Gary White's out of jail... There's suddenly no reason for Sid to be alive. Ooh, sounds scary. Let's end with some good news. Amanda Martin, mm. the widow of Nick Martin, has found love again. She's now with Brian Beams Kennedy and looking very happy about it. Good on her. I'm Ben Harvey.